Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Duff Dog and I got a real treat of a barn find for you. Today we're gonna see if we can't get a 1967 International Harvester Scout running. So I was having a sandwich at a local establishment with a uh, buddy of mine. And he said, you know, I got that old Scout. It's kind of sitting there, rotting away in a building. Last time we drove it, it got a miss and uh, put it away in a building. The brakes were getting kind of bad and it's been sitting there for a few years. If you're interested in it, go see what it's gonna take to get her going and uh, we'll go from there. So he's had this thing for 24 years now. He's had new floor pans put in it, it's got the half of a 345 whatever that is four cylinder in it it's got a four speed he claims that's rare it's a 67 four wheel drive anyway let's get this barn opened up take a look at it also we had somebody comment that if a owner puts it in there it's not technically a barn find well who else is going to put it in there other than the person who owns the barn i don't get it anyway it's in a barn that's where we found it it's a barn find. Maybe that's not a barn, maybe we call that a Quonset hut. I don't know. Let's uh, get the key and get this thing opened up. Yeah, that's keeping everybody out. Also, everybody likes the uh, North Dakota agricultural stuff, so we got some bee boxes over here. This is the uh, security for the premises. No duff, don't go open those up. We'll take some honey though. Airplane, airplane. <laughs> I guess we're just gonna have to fit it out that hole. There. So I guess the Scout, which came out in 1962, was the first technical SUV, if you don't count Jeeps, but who knows. You can tell it's a 67 Scout because of the way that it is. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. Again, being an international, pretty crude. Grill is basically just expanded metal. They didn't have much for body lines. It's just pretty much slab sided. He said it's been repainted, but that was before he got it. There's a little bit of a body line here. It's got a sunroof, you know, cause that was a terrible thing to do in the uh, 60s, 70s, or even now. I don't know, I think people are over that. But the roof was caving in, so we had to put these on. He says, this is not a roof rack. He says, that is structural. Well, you want to check it out? Check it out. Oh, he said we got to. Take the mouse poison, that, that's gotta stay with the building. So we'll put that over here with the two plus two that his dad bought brand new in 1980. What a gem that thing is. That one runs and drives, so can't do a wheel it run on that piece of equipment, but pretty cool. Four wheel drives if you're into the agricultural stuff. They got that big long nose on them and the short back end. Yeah, where was it sold at? Klein's Implement, Oaks, North Dakota. She's a gem. Yeah, he uh, said the heater's terrible in this thing, so he's got an add-on heater up front and another add-on heater back here. Full-size spare. He didn't ever say if he had the top off. He said the bumper is held on by hopes and dreams. He's pulling out a bush. Nothing about come off there. Oh, look at that. Gold lettering. All right, I see it's got some flat tires. So let's get those pumped up. The old Kodiak Gillettes. I've never heard of those. And uh, let's get this thing out of here. Oh my gosh. Flexi hoses galore. These Milwaukee battery powered air compressors are the cat's pajamas. Just got my 18 volt one. Real good. 12 volt one is all right. 18 volts. Way good, ain't it, Duff? So we got two flats on this thing, front left, front right. You can see the front left took air. Of course, the one you can't hardly get at won't take air, 
must have uh, broken the bead. But we're gonna try to sneak this thing out of here. I was hoping we could get them pumped up and I could just roll it back a little bit and crank the wheel, but we're gonna have to crank her real tight and get past all these filing cabinets and crap in the edge of the door and sneak her out of here. Cause I don't know how we're gonna pull it back that way. And I didn't bring a jack and minimal tools, like almost none. So this is where I wish my counterpart had uh, thumbs to steer and such. All right, we got her tied down. Let's get the trailer pulled out of the doors. Hopefully we can get these old rickety sliding doors to slide on their rollers. Let's get home and have a sandwich. Big day tomorrow, opening day of pheasant season. And we're gonna go car shopping. No hunting tomorrow, Duff. All right, let's do this. All right, let's see if we can't uh, get this thing unloaded on three tires and not ruin anything. All right, we got the scout inside. Didn't uh, run it into the telehandler, didn't smash up the scout. Duff or I didn't get run over. Let's take a look at this thing a little bit closer. The first thing I did when I got it inside here was jacked it up, hooked air hose to it. Sure enough, we got that tire on the bead, so I really hate stuff that doesn't roll. You guys know that. So here we go. These bumpers are, that's a factory bumper. They're pretty crude. It's just a piece of stamp steel with a couple of ribs in it. When he said his kid hit a concrete embankment in Fargo with it, and you can see it folded that top lip of that frame rail, and obviously the bottom lip. You can see what they should look like. So that's got to be straightened out or cut off and fixed, or I don't know. And that kind of screwed up the uh, tow hook down there as well, because I'm guessing that was bolted into the bottom of the frame. Yeah, he's a good boy. Uh, she's a hybrid, you know, for all the winter things. He said when he used to drive it to work, he used to have an extension cord hooked to that thing all the time, and he would loop it from mirror to mirror, and then when he'd get to work, he would just... Plug her in, never had to take the extension cord off because he just drove across town with it. A little whiskey dent over there on the passenger side, lower fender, kind of kinked the fender up. Little dinger there. It's got the Gillette Kodiaks on like we talked about earlier. What are these, the free locks? I don't know, never heard of those. Must be something aftermarket. She's all wheel drive. Aftermarket flexi antenna. It's got aftermarket wipers that are plastic. Duff's been all about this thing. We got these terrible striped flies this fall. These things are freaking everywhere. There's that add-on heater. And up there's the stock heater behind Duff's butt. Looks like she's got the stock AM radio. 80,947, I'm guessing that's original. She's got the wrist rocket Brody knob on there. She's got the three gun gun rack. He did say he had the seats powder coated, the frames anyway. Well, this one's getting rusty. And then he had them recovered. They actually look pretty good and they're in pretty decent shape yet. So I don't know why there's a twin stick if you can put the front in low range and the rear in high range or I don't know what's going on there. Maybe he's got a PTO. Don't know much about it. We'll have to do some digging. They do have a padded dash, Whew. the finest. I'm guessing 67 was the first year of these that had the marker lights. Maybe, I don't know. I'm guessing the door didn't seal up real well, so we got a little 
duct tape sealage going on. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that the door hinges are shot. Is it just the pins or is it the hinge itself? Oh yeah, that hinge. She is wasted. So I'm gonna need one of them. Door panels curling up a little bit, not bad. He did say he had floors put in it one time professionally. We'll uh, have to get it on the hoist to find that. It's got 235, 75, 15s. I like to call these a trailer wheel as well. Sorry, they're American Racings, but modular trailer wheels is what I call them. Call them what you want. They're not the worst wheel. They're, I mean, they're way above Kregers, but yeah. And then of course, white letters out, four wheel drive things. Ooh, what are these? I'm guessing those are wasps. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Oh, those are spiders. Ooh, a little spider nest going on in there. Ugh. Yeah, we're just gonna, those are not, oh my gosh. That's where those flies come from. They're coming out of that. We're getting rid of this. Striped flies be gone. Oh, hey, we got new tires sitting over there for a Dammit's Dooley so that his kids don't blow a tire. Thanks to you guys for buying merchandise and we turned that into some shirts. Had to kick a little in on my end, but whatever. It's going to good use. All right, let's keep checking this thing out. Duff has already taken squatters right on his favorite seat. The tailgate came open on the way home on us. We rubbed a little paint off of it. There's a little rust down there in the bottom of the tailgate. I suppose dirt sits in there, can't get out. We got a real unique latching system here. Uh, doesn't look like it's latching real well. Same with the hatch. It's just got these rods over here that you turn the handle and those latch in there. Not a real good system. Full size spare. I was gonna put that on, but that is flat as well. I looked for a date code. There's no date code, so these things are prior to uh, 2000, as near as I can tell, so 22 year old tires. A little rot in the rear quarter down there where it meets the floor pan. Somebody put this add-on bed liner. It's kind of a nice addition. That latch is okay. I just thought it was cool how they had International on there and then they had the Scout in cursive. Again, this uh, bumper add-on aftermarket, they had some square tubing. It looks like it's welded okay, but it's just attached to the body. It's not attached to the frame. He's lucky he uh, wasn't pulling a trailer on that to let loose. It does have backup lights. I don't know if those are mandatory in 67. 66 maybe. I think Shixy Shix Chevy pickups have them too. This uh, corner's been pushed in at one time. Looks like it was pushed in again. He said it's been patched up. You can see some mud down there. Yeah, she's a little tight once again. There's that dual gas tank. It looks like when they pulled it on the trailer and stored it last time, they must have been pulling her backwards. Got the mud that hit the gas cap and went up the door. Yeah. And then uh, that doesn't help with the whole heating situation. These tops are steel. I know some of the uh, Broncos, not Broncos, well, the later Broncos, but the uh, K5 Blazers are fiberglass. It's just me, you goon. Yeah, whatever. It's funny, this door isn't all sagged out, but okay, never mind. I'm guessing they're probably notorious for that. And then look at the door move on the hinge. Pretty crude stuff by uh, International there. Nice little seat adjust lever. There's your flipper to go between the fuel tanks. I don't know what this roach clip and wire down here, that must be for bypassing some ignition. Oh my gosh, look at this. Scotch clips, uh, wire nuts, inline fuses. Just wires hanging everywhere. Oh, 22 shell, shooting gophers. I could see a little daylight through the floor up there. They didn't put enough seam sealer in. I would imagine International had some, you know, bead rolling or stamping or something in these floors. Not perfectly flat, but what do I know? International's pretty crude. Somebody was enjoying themselves a uh, Coors casserole. Colorado Kool-Aid, if you will. It was originally this green here. They did a pretty good job. They did the jams. They did the dash. They didn't do under the engine bay, though. Again... Door panel curling up. Door stops are nothing more than a chunk of the old seat belt. Looks like this one's been overextended a few times. And tweaked down the door a bit. Dead battery. Looks like all aftermarket gauges there. Stuart Warner, temp gauge, oil pressure gauge. 
The one on the right might be the original international gauge, but the rest, uh, maybe the fuel gauge is original, but I think that's aftermarket as well. That's the beauty of these things. You can put whatever gauges you want in there. Unless, I don't know a ton about these. Maybe they put this insert in there and then hacked it up for those. Oh, sweet dome light. Oh, is that a freaking water shutoff knob for uh, latch in the sunroof? You know what I despise worse than flexi hoses and white spokes and Kregers? Aftermarket sunroofs. This thing's a the devil. Duff, you want to come out here and open this hood? He likes that seat. I guess I'll be doing it myself. Let's see if I still got my touch. Oh yeah, nothing to it. Like I said, this is the original color. Here's pretty much how crude international is. Like nothing was stamped. It was all just reformed. It was all just bent over a die. Like these inner fenders and stuff. It's all squared edges and stuff. Well, that's all you seal off the firewall. Just take a chunk of an inner tube and lay that over your clutch pedal. Mash our cylinder cap is loose. I don't know what this tank is for. Again, another uh, truck tube with some rivets sealing that firewall up. It's got a Mopar air cleaner on her though. You can tell it's Mopar because they're the coolest ones ever. Plus they say Mopar on them. Got one of these on the slant six. Looks like the uh, heater core, they capped off the ducting going to the front up here. So you're only getting hot air in there. The ginormousest flexi hoses ever. One of them is a green stripe. I'll oh, be an actual regular low radiator hose. Oh yeah, regular hose down there. Looks like some pipe fittings and adapters and such. Carburetor looks like she's uh, pretty fresh. Actually, the engine looks like it's all been painted up at one time. He did say he's had an issue with a bent valve or a bent push rod or something one other time. And uh, he's thinking that might be what's going on, why it was missing when he was driving it home the last time. Who knows? Gates radiator cap. Oh, well, no coolant in there, so uh, not looking good for the home team. Hopefully they didn't overheat it. I did notice that there's this quick connect coupler up here, and it ties into the brake line. So I'm wondering if they didn't used to tow this thing behind a camper with like a hydraulic tow brake, and they would uh, hook that up with a surge brake. Use that for kind of like trailer brakes. What do I know? Interstate battery. I'm sure we can date code this thing somehow. They've been green tops for a long time, like those. So I'm guessing this thing's a few years old. He thought it was parked three or four years ago, but time gets away from us, so you never know. Looks like she's got some pretty new exhaust on it. Let's hope the starter's good because I don't have any of these starters. Again, this is like a 345 International V8. They cut it in half. Like, I think you can take a 345 International head, drop that right on here. I'm pretty sure. Again, the bottom end and the intake's all different. But maybe even like the water pumps are the same. I don't know. What do I know? International things. Let's check the dipstick, Jimmy. See if they run her out of oil. Think with your dipstick, Jimmy! Nope, she's full maybe a hair over full it don't look too black so maybe there's a chance that they didn't uh i don't know they probably ran it out and just put new stuff in let's get a battery and see what happens he thinks he said if you ran it out of fuel it was really hard priming it so he thinks maybe his kid was pulling it around trying to prime in it or something i don't know something about running out of fuel and he thinks uh, a push rod got bent. But he's not a mechanic, he's a salesman. So we'll be the judge of that. Let's get a battery and go from there. A nice bungee cord battery hold down. That's probably factory international stuff. We're gonna we're gonna need a new one of those. Whoopsies. And they even tighten their battery. Who put the 7 16 in the half inch slot? Mojo. 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 There we go. I'm not very good at tightening those down because I might need the battery. Ugh. Dave's not here, man, is our battery sponsor this week. Should we clean up those battery cables? Probably. Probably won't. No sparkage, no smoke. Good to go. 
If it's only been three or four years, the gas should be just fine in this thing. Let's see if it cranks over. Hopefully it ain't locked up. And hopefully the starter does starter things. It'd be super handy if you could turn the key for me. You could find time in your busy schedule for that. Okay, you just uh, do duff things back there. I got this. Out of gear. Yep. Oh, how do we turn that blower off? What is... I don't like that ignition switch. Well, here's a fuel gauge switch. And that does things. That must just be for the gauge. One's empty, one's half full. That's the washer. Must be the wipers. That must be choke. Lights? Probably. Oh yeah, dash lights even come on. What a deal. Radio? Nope. Fan? Oh. Cigarette lighter? Any goodies in there? Nope. What the glove box? Just another rat's nest of wiring. And some labels for front axle operation. Oh, there it is. Transfer case shifting instructions. Four wheel high, four wheel low. Two wheel high, neutral. That's why a lot of people like these things was for towing because you can put the transfer case in neutral, which you can't do in a lot of things anymore. I think Jeeps are for it. This guy actually bought a Jeep to pull behind his camper. He could have used this. Okay, back to the uh, ignition debacle. Maybe this button. Maybe it's uh, got a neutral safety switch. It's got the dimmer switch on the floor. I don't know. I guess we're going to have to get a loser switch out. How do we turn that silly... Oh. There. So much electrical disgustingness. I don't understand this key switch. Watch the fuel gauge. I don't know. Blips there. Blips there. That must be on because it goes a half tank. And you crank and it drops out. Who knows? We're just going to assume that's off. And we're going to hook up a loser switch. I don't know what's going on with that ignition switch, but it's clearly not set up for crank. I can't imagine there's any electrical issues in this thing. All the scotch clips and butt connectors. And the, what, are they, what are the electricians called? Wire nuts. Ugh. I think I'd rather have wire nuts than freaking scotch clips, but whatever. Ah, good times. I'd like to say there's a lot of room to work under here, you know, being a little force owner, but it is tight. You have a, I don't think they had V8s in these from the factory. I don't know. That's what he told me. Oh, more butt connectors. That one's about broke through. That connector, I'm sure, is real good at making contact. Wow. I think we can just go ahead and order an entire wire harness before we get started here. All right, it's on there, but not very well. Let's see what happens. We're getting some smoke coming out of something. I ain't turning over very fast. Maybe Dave's not here is not really here. Dave's not here, tested as not being here. So we got Hot Wheels in the backup seat. A little better. Well, let's uh, hook a jumper wire up to the coil. Give her a tickle of hot sauce. Oh, she's been backfiring. She's a little sooty up there. Let's see if she lights off. All right, we got our jumper wire in over the positive side of our coil. Let's see if we got some spark without electrocuting herself, hopefully. We got spark. She just does not want to crank. I wonder if that starter is getting weak or what. Undersized battery cables, bad connection. Can't imagine bad connection without cleaning them cables up. Let's give her some hot sauce, see what happens. Let's see if the old scout just wants to live. How do you fill the float bowl on this one? We don't care, we're just gonna douse it in there.
Come on, old girl. Okay, we're not getting fuel up here. So, let's uh, figure out what we got going on there. You're doing good. It ain't got no gas in it. Where is the fuel pump at? Well, we probably just follow the hose on the carburetor down to, oh my gosh, it's a great big vacuum pumping situation. Yuck. Well, for fun. So a lot of these early rigs had vacuum powered windshield wipers and some of them, they ran off the vacuum of the engine. Other ones, the fuel pump also doubled as a vacuum pump and that's what ran the wipers. It makes sense because you don't see a wiper motor up here. So yeah, she runs off vacuum and they're big and they're ugly and they're expensive and there's twice as many diaphragms that go bad in there. So, let's see if we're even getting fuel up to the fuel pump and go from there. Maybe they just got a bad fuel shutoff switch underneath the uh, cab. We'll find out. We're not getting any fuel to the fuel pump from the fuel tanks. And also, this line was on there. And he goes from an inverted flare to a pipe fitting to a 45 degree pipe fitting. And there was this hose clamp on it, and I don't know why there was a hose clamp on it. There shouldn't have been. So, anyway, we're gonna just hook up a boat tank and see how that works. And then we're gonna go from there. See if it's, obviously it's a fuel issue back there. Maybe, maybe it's the pump's just not pulling it from up there. I don't know, but uh, we'll see if we can't get it running off of a boat tank first and then figure out that stuff later. Also, we might need the hoist, so. I'm over this laying on the back stuff. That's why we uh, risking it for the biscuit. Got a new shop, so I don't have to do this stuff on my back. So I'm gonna find some fittings. We're gonna hook up a boat tank. See you in a minute. We stuck an eighth inch NPT male to 90 degree 5 16 barb. We got our boat tank hooked up. This thing was built for Bob the boat tank right here. Just fits right in there. We got our primer bulb over here. I think we got fuel up to the pump. Let's see if it does uh, fuel pump things. Also, it's underneath a lot of black paint on this radiator, so I think somebody just put a fresh radiator in it. They even put some fresh washers on it when they reinstalled it. What a deal! Too bad they didn't put some new freaking formed hoses on. Losers. And our coil wire has been hooked up, and that coil is super hot. Whoops, sorry about that, Mr. Coil. Let's see if she lights off. You gotta be kidding me. They parked it because it was out of fuel. I guess we'll find out if it's got a mist to it. Figure out how to rev this stupid thing up. Well, there might be more to it. There's definitely a lower end noise. Didn't make the knot go away. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to pull some plug wires out and see if we can figure out which cylinder is knocking. It sounds like it's bottom end noise for sure. I'm gonna put it in gear and see if putting a load on it maybe uh, makes it worse. Seems like when you got a rod knock, putting a load on it really makes it amplified. No, we're not going for a ride. We're just gonna try some things. Brakes? Yeah, right. Okay, so much for putting a load on it. Hmm. We might have to get creative. We got 40 freaking pounds of oil pressure at idle, so I don't know. That's pretty good. Oh, do you need some attention? I'm sure you do. So I guess I really don't want to mess with the brakes if the bottom end of the engine's bad. Maybe it's something on a valve train. Well, uh, let's pop the valve cover off and see. I was hoping that pulling the plug wires off would tell us which rod bearing is knocking because that's what it sounds like to me. I suppose if it's a main bearing, it's not going to really matter if we uh, unhook a spark plug. Let's pull a valve cover off and see if that tells us anything. Wow, everything in here looks like brand freaking new. So, let's see if everything's doing what it should. Get the coil unhooked, give her a couple cranks. Everything's uh, doing everything they should up here. All the Valves are going up and down, rocker shafts are going back and forth. We're getting plenty of oil up here. Yeah, uh, bad news for the home team. I think we got ourselves a lower end noise. No bueno. Well, since nothing's going on up here, we're gonna put the valve cover back on, button that up so we don't get any debris in there and there's really nothing we can do up here. So, and then I don't have a greasy valve cover laying on my bench, so everybody wins. You would not think uh, a full valve cover on a four cylinder in this thing would be that hard, but. It's tight. I just called up Whitey, he said, 
there's no way it's that bottom end. And I said, well, I'd like to put a load on to see where he says, try the park brake. He says, That's, it's got a good park brake on it. So watch, we'll set the park brake. No, the cables won't release. But let's set that, try to put a load on it. He thinks it might be the clutch fork. I don't know, let's see what happens. I think it's in the bottom end. I wonder how easy it is to pull the oil pan and take a look at that. Probably not real easy. See if we can get over here before it dies. Dang it. He said the starter button works. There it is. Why won't it stay running? So as you can see, we got the scout on the lift, crawling underneath and looked, and the oil pan doesn't look like it's gonna be too terrible to get off there. It actually looks like it's pretty easy. So let's put it on the hoist, pop that thing off there, and see. I drove that thing in again tonight. I drove it again tonight. It's been sitting for a couple days since we were last at it, and uh, she's definitely banging away. Customer called, and he said, well, the customer, the owner, previous owner, whatever you want to call it. And he said, well, let's, let's take it apart and let's look at it. So I guess uh, it doesn't hurt. So get some oil out of the deal. Burn this winter. So here we go. So it looks like, I don't know what they were doing with that little tin plate. I don't think that should be there. Cause that's tying the shackles together and you don't want your left shackle tied to your right shackle because shouldn't it have to articulate you know when one side goes up and the other side goes down not like that little piece of tin is gonna stop much but yeah see that toe hooks curled under there pretty good should be sticking straight out like that one again i don't think those are factory either and you can see where all the paint kind of blew off the bumper there. It's a Dana 27. You can tell because of the way that it is and that it says 27 on it. A frost plug decided to just start leaking on the front of the engine on us. So add that to the to-do list. Looks like it's got coilover shocks all the way around. I don't see the novelty behind these things. I don't know what that little bicycle coil is going to do. But there's the oil pan. Should be pretty farkin' easy to remove. Got a Fleet Guard oil filter on it. And she is a greasy, grimy, gopher gut mess. So I'm, I'm wondering if that ain't what happened. This thing leaked so much oil. Somebody ran it out, topped it off so Dad didn't know. And here we are. Look at this cute little drive shaft going up to the uh, front end there. She's worn out in the splines. A nice little factory skid plate there. Oh, the splines in the rear drive shaft. A lot better, but a little play. These coilovers are at least a little girthier. You can see these heater hoses he's got running to the back. And that heater core he's got back there. I don't know if that's the way the exhaust ran from the OEM. I bet it is. But they snuck her out the side here. Looks like they beat the crap out of it there. Splice there. How many splices are there? Oh boy, that's a good crease. One splice, two splice, three. Oh, that ain't so bad. Just three. Until you get to the muffler. She's kinked again there. Good stuff. And then instead of going straight out the back, they go crossways. Oh, international. And then this is a 44. Again, because it's marked. 44. These are actually really nice rear ends for early hot rods because they're a five on five and a half bolt pattern for a Ford. And you can get all kinds of gear ratios for these. They use these things for like 40 freaking years. I don't know what those are for a uh, transfer case. I'm sure somebody will tell me. A Dana 18, maybe? Something like that. It's a Dana. It does say that. It's kind of neat how it's got that whole bottom cover on there you can take off. And I'm guessing it's a gear to gear, but probably pretty light. Yeah, this thing is just a wiring catastrophe. There's the floorboards that were 
professionally replaced you. Uh, they didn't do the worst job, but not the best. At least they put the gussets in there. They did not do inner rockers on this side. They're shot. There's that switch off valve that's behind the seat. And the uh, tanks are right up here, I think, on each side. Yeah, all those lines are rusty. You don't you want to use clear plastic line. And then there's no clamps on it. Just tiny quarter inch line. And like, why is there five freaking clamps there? We may never know. Okay, well, let's uh, pull an oil pan off. Oh, I was gonna look at the inner rocker over here. Yeah, she's gone too. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they've been done before. You can see there's the original quarter panel. And there's the new quarter panel. This thing's been fixed once already. To be expected though, because these things are uh, pretty rusty around here. I don't think they did this side though. Judging by the looks of things anywho. Again, I am no body expert, but I know enough to be dangerous. Oh, they put some one inch square tubing underneath the floor up here. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, and they just put flat floor plans in there. There's got to be some type of bead roll or something in there. Icky. Okay, oil pan time. We'll drain the oil first. Well, all of them appear to be tight, and none of them look really blue like they're scored. There is this chunk of metal hanging from the oil pickup tube, but I don't know what that is. Hopefully that caught it before it went anywhere. And the oil doesn't look all silvery, like there's a bunch of metal bearings. There's some debris in here, but it just seems like it's chunks of, uh, silicone from whoever put it together last time so we might just be putting this thing back together and continuing to look for a noise maybe it's in the timing gear or something i don't know we'll have to keep playing around see what we can find well you know what curiosity did to the cat right well i got the best of me here so i pulled the number four rod cap off i don't know if these are marked from the factory if this has been overhauled but that bearing looks like new pretty much i guess suppose we could pop it out of there and see if she's been rebuilt but i don't think it uh really matters to us at this point whether it's been rebuilt or not unless we're going to overhaul it and uh, if it's already been turned 40 under we don't want to do that but I took off number four because the oil pump's at the front. One, two, three, four. This should be the last one to get oil. So this should be the first one to starve. She's fat and happy. Definitely no uh, Ethiopian starving away here. So now I'm regretting pulling this thing apart. I should have maybe pulled out the belt. Maybe it's the water pump or the alternator or something making noise. I don't know. Silly scout. Back at it. We're back on Das Blake. We're, it's the scout we're back on the scout it's, it's not a jeep either got the oil pan back on i did pull every single rod cap off and they all look like freaking brand new so it's definitely not a rod bearing uh there's nothing rolling around the oil pan there's nothing on the oil pump that would be rattling uh we checked the timing gear that looks good. We checked inside the clutch, rotated it around, didn't see anything in there. Nothing where the fuel pump hooks up, the cam. I have no idea what's clattering. So we're going to get some fresh oil. Uh, we're not going to use the Getty stuff in a can because everybody's like, oh, that stuff's too valuable. And uh, you're a millennial and you don't know how to stab it in the can right. And uh, you poke a hole. You don't need to poke a hole. You dump it in the valve cover. It's supposed to pour slow. So it's going slow when you go do other things. And it's a customer vehicle, so we're not going to use that on there because I'd feel bad if that... Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Oil goes bad, even though it's made of, like, 300-million-year-old dinosaurs. So, uh, oh, yeah, and then check out the uh, 
whatever the Getty family, go look up the Getty family, the history. Like he was once, it was John Paul Getty, the first, was at one time the richest person in the world. Like I thought that was like John D. Rockefeller. Maybe he was the richest person at another time. But anyway, the Getty family got some interesting shady history. One of the, the, the John Getty, the whatever, the third, he, uh, Talked about kidnapping himself because he couldn't make ends meet by modeling at 16 years old. But then uh, the kidnappers that he was discussing it with decided to kidnap him anyway for in a ransom of like $2.2 million, which is like $100 million. No, no, $17 million back then, which is $100 million in this time. This is like the late 60s, early 70s. Anyway, long story short, uh, they actually did kidnap him and they cut his ear off, you know, Van Gogh style. I think that was Van Gogh and they mailed it to his grandfather and his grandfather's like I have like 13 other grandchildren so then they're just gonna want to kidnap everybody if I pay this so finally they came down to 3.2 million dollars and he settled at 2.2 million dollars and in the meanwhile the third John Paul Giddy the third was he's getting pretty sick because they weren't taking real good care of him with uh you know the whole cutting his ear off thing it takes ear infection to a whole new level and uh yeah he came back and he was better and got the ear fixed up because you know they were millionaires back then uh, but then he kind of went off the deep end and got into drugs and alcohol and had a stroke and some stuff and yeah just just read about the family it's it's an interesting read so we're not going to use the getty oil on this project we did however notice the old dana 44 here now it's leaking out the drain plug that's good because that's the lowest point so i'm sure there's oil left in it she's a uh, got a locker in it or a very tight posse some type of limited slip action going on there so that's pretty neat that's pretty neat okay i'm gonna put this on the ground put some oil in it and uh, fire it back up and continue chasing said noise yay got her running again look at that 45 pounds of oil pressure at idle we can still hear a knock, knock, knock. Maybe let's check the timing and make sure the timing's where it needs to be and that maybe we got the firing order. Somebody's got that screwed up. Sounds like a little diesel going there. Clack, 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 clack. All right, let's get out. We lined up our timing mark on the crankshaft with the timing mark on the timing cover I guess you'd call it and it's pointing at number four firing order is one three four two so it's 180 off but uh, it's it's obviously running right so it's just on the exhaust stroke on the number one cylinder instead of the compression stroke so should be good there got our handy dandy distributor wrench out it's a 5 16 bolt so uh, we use the half inch side of this handy dandy tool by KD it looks like it's a part number 104 this is a great tool 916 on one end, half inch on the other, and uh, you can take it off. And it's got a 3 ace drive on there, so you can index it four different ways. And if you want, you can put an extension on there and a ratchet, and you can really reef on her if it's a long ways down there, so on and so forth. Super freaking handy tool, so you can't put it back together with one finger. Anyway, I'm gonna adjust the timing now, see if that makes it any better. I'm not gonna use a light because we're just gonna listen use your ears you know all your sensory functions and uh see if the knock goes away or if it runs any better duff's gonna start it up for us oh you want me to start it you listen okay you're gonna start it good call what a piece of trash i got a piece of trash car who remembers that Adam Sandler song? Probably nobody. So it goes clockwise. So I'm thinking it's got too much timing, so if we advance it. Sound like timing to me.
Hey, at least I'm not getting electrocuted. I believe ignition knock comes from the timing being uh, too advanced, so. I don't think it's timing. Next, I'm gonna pull the alternator slash water pump belt off, and we'll see if the noise is coming from either the water pump or the alternator. Eliminate that guy. All right, let's try with the belt off. Don't let your pants fall down, Mr. Scout. You ain't got no belt. Thought for a second it went away, but I can still hear it. Yep, still there. Let's put the belt back on, just so that when we figure out the issue, we don't cook the head gasket. Most definitely a GM alternator they're using here. It's just looking at the valve cover, and it says time V8 engine on number eight cylinder, time four cylinder engine on number one cylinder. So that's what's interesting about internationals, you time them on the number eight cylinder on V8s and uh, that you can use the same valve cover on a V8 as a four cylinder. This is the big dog. I think they used half of a 304 and half of a 392. They also made a 345, but they didn't make a four cylinder version of the 345. So this would be half of a 392 carry the four. This is a 196. And uh, half of a 304 would be a 152. If you want to see more four cylinder international action, go check out our Binder Bob video. I don't know what that was, a 64 international C900. We got that one to run, but we didn't get her driving. Hydraulic clutch things. Thankfully, this one's a mechanical clutch. They had things figured out by 67 in the clutch situation. Now, I don't really know what we do. We eliminate the front accessories. I guess we can pull the spark plugs out. And we can take a peek down the cylinder holes and see if anything's playing kissy kissy smoochy smoochy in there. Yeah, let's get the schlong out and probe a few holes if you know what I mean. Got all our spark plugs out. They're the RJ12YC Champion variety. They all look all right. Pretty, pretty fuely in there. Definitely getting plenty of fuel. Also had to sacrifice our nice magnetic gear wrench socket. I think uh, these were just warm enough that it melted the magnets out of there. So hopefully that's covered under warranty. If not, we'll have to get a new one coming because that's pretty much my favorite spark plug socket ever. The magnetic ones are way better than the rubber boot ones. Plus it's got the built on swivel in it. These things are good gear wrench spark plug sockets with the swivel. I think I've mentioned that before. Anyway. Let's get our snap-on meter out, and I think we're going to do a compression test before we do the bore scope, and maybe that'll tell us if we got one that's not playing well. We did leave the PCV off. It doesn't have a bunch of blow-by, so I don't think there's a valve issue, but let's see what we got. Here we go. All right, let's see what we got. Number one cylinder, got the carburetor held wide open. that you know 120 psi i can live with that let's go on to number two hey i figured out how to make this thing hold pressure now it's all in the schrader valve all right let's see what's behind door number two oh 
Uh, about 110 PSI, not as good as number one, but still pretty dang acceptable. Good enough for the girls we go with, as we say around here. Do you guys think we should make a shirt or some decals that say that? Yeah, we just need to get ourselves a graphic artist on board. Any of you kids graphic artists? Hit us up, mortgagepair at gmail.com. Because Duff and I are not artistic. Okay, back to work. Let's see what lies behind door number three. Best one yet, right at 125. Not seeing anything there. I guess we'll check number four. This one's gonna be a real treat. Getting that spark plug out back there was not fun. It's sitting back by the radio in the passenger compartment. Any guesses on door four? I'm guessing it's gonna be uh, 120. Looks like just over 125. Pretty good. So I guess all that told us was that cylinder two was slightly lower than the rest, but nothing too concerning there. So I guess we stick the bore scope down there and take a look. See if we can see anything on the heads of the pistons. But I don't know, it must be in the valve train? Cheese and rice. I don't get it. Don't get it. Wrist pin? Piston slap? I don't know. Not really having any aha moments with the schlong here. Look at that. You can read the part number on there, kind of. It says up C A H dash Z dash 20. And then what is that? 309280. G3 and then an A. This is the number two cylinder. Where can I find it? You see that little scratch right there? He said at one point the screw fell out of the butterfly on the carburetor and fell into the piston. He said his wife was dropping his kids off at work and it stuck WFO and uh, revved to the moon. And he figured out that the uh, screw fell out of the butterfly and went whammo right into the top of the piston. Uh, what was it? The international dealer in Fargo, Nelson, I believe, they had the screw on hand for like pennies. So that was pretty neat, he said. But yeah, all these pistons look about the same. Super weird shape. Like right away when I saw it, I thought, oh man, the pistons melted. I've never seen that before. But nope, they all got that uh, silly dish on the front side there. So uh, that schlong has not showing us anything other than there's a dimple in the number two piston where the uh, screw fell out of the butterfly 20 some years ago. There's uh, number three there. Again, same thing. Don't see really any issues with the cylinder wall. I don't know what is causing the clanging on this son of a biscuit. So, I don't know, we're running out of ideas. I'm sure somebody's screaming at the screen right now. Check this, that, and the other. All I can really think of is firing up the engine and then like putting the handle of a hammer against each one of the rocker shafts, seeing if the noise goes away. Like a bad lifter, I don't know. It shouldn't be any valve that's out of adjustment because we wouldn't have that good a compression, I wouldn't think, but who knows? Hey, click the link down below. Get yourself some Mortsky merch. I'm a, I think these are pretty swanky. The old Mountain Dew logo made into Mortsky repair. So I guess we're gonna keep hammering away at the Hammering International Hammer Harvester. I just wanna get hammered right now. This thing's got my mind all boggled and such. I don't know what to do. I think we're just gonna call it a night. It is about that time. Think about it real hard. Okay, see you tomorrow. We are back on the Scout, put the spark plugs in, fired it up for the customer. 
or the owner, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. He's, he's probably going to be the customer because I don't know that we're buying this one. Anyway, got it running and he said, oh yeah, it's made that knock since 1998 since I bought it. So that was a whole bunch of running around for nothing. But uh, it had a coolant leak, so we put an inch and three quarter inch soft plug, freeze plug, whatever you want to call it, in front of the engine here. Uh, getting it out was easy. Getting it in is no bueno. I got this special tool for pounding them in, and uh, we couldn't get her pounded in straight with that. So we had to pull the old rad meter out. So now I'm putting that all back together. And then uh, hopefully we can address the fuel situation, maybe the brakes. I don't know. I don't know how far we're gonna get. I am about out of time. This is the last night that I have to uh, work on this thing this week. So I don't know that we're gonna get to go for a test drive because it is gonna be dark here in about a half hour by the looks of things. I can't see the clock. Yeah, she's uh, getting dark early these days. The neighbors got their corn picked, both uh, right across the road and the next guy's down. So corn's coming off quick. There's a few guys still picking away at beans, but yeah, let's uh, get this thing put back together and go from there. Oh, the other thing is the dipstick ran right in front of that son of a biscuit, so we had to get the dipstick tube out. I can't see where the heck it's at. I set it here somewhere, but there it is. Luckily, this thing leaked enough oil over the years that she came out pretty easy. Also, fall is here. You can hear the uh, used oil furnace going away up there. Yeah, that's right, Greta. We're recycling used oil and turn it into heat and uh, exhaust vapors that go up and ruin the ozone, probably. But isn't that what propane and gas and you know, I mean, the electricity just doesn't come out of nowhere. So, let me get this thing back together. We're going to go from there. We're really disappointing that, oh yeah, that noise, that's been there like that. I did a bunch of research online. It sounds like once you get these things hot, they'll... Uh, start making piston slap so that can either be from the skirt of the piston going back and forth or the hole where the uh, wrist pin goes through gets oblong and that's where you get your piston noise so it's only it's, it's pretty common on these things sounds like it gets better when they warm up and now the air compressor is running so it's too loud to film all right there's your update we're gonna put it together over there. as you can see we got a radiator back in we got her full of coolant, pulled the master cylinder cover off, and as you guess, she was bone dry, so I'm gonna go crack some bleeders underneath. Let's see if we can't get some fluid down there. And the duffel up, I guess. Sir Duff is uh, ready to go for R-I-D-E. Lord Duff, my bad, my bad, Lord, my bad. All right, let's get this thing up in the air. So we can't get some brakes. It is dark out, so I guess we really haven't done a night ride yet. So maybe that's what we're gonna have to do this week. We got the brakes bled up. Uh, we cracked it and the front ones self bled just by gravity feeding and the back ones we had to reverse bleed and get our syringe shooter up there. Now we gotta figure out our fuel situation because I don't think we wanna leave that. Bob the boat tank under the hood. So I'm gonna take the compressed air and blow through some lines and see if we can't get fuel things to happen. Uh, yeah, it's really small. I don't even think that's 5 sixteenths. I think it's quarter inch. I don't like that clear line. Plus it's getting really brittle and this black stuff's getting real brittle. So we're gonna, we're gonna do some configure and see what we can't come up with here. And unfortunately you can't get at the bottoms of these tanks to even replace this rubber. So I don't know how those must come out from the inside of the rig. Yeah, not an ideal situation. I don't know why they didn't just put the fuel tank back here. Oh, you're still hanging out up there? Yeah? Well, I guess you should have jumped out before I lifted it up. It's like the fourth time it's went up and down, and you've been totally content the rest of the time. So as you just heard me talking to the camera, you're like, Hey, I'm the star of this show. I'm Lord Duff. All right. Sorry, man. Hold on, let me high five. Such a good pumpers. Let me get the fuel situation figured out, then we'll go for a ride in the dark. Okay. We'll use Bob the boat tank if all else fails. Oh, we got some fuel there. 
So, don't smell good, but it don't smell the worst either. I'm gonna go find some quarter inch line. We're gonna blow through this end. Ugh, that makes me have to take a leak. And uh, see if we can't get some fuel up front. Well, that vein seems clear. It'd be really cool if this thing had a 90 degree fitting right here. Don't worry, I will put hose clamps on here. I promise. Oh! Running down my armpit. Now let's see if it leaks out up front. It should. We got all kinds of fuel there, but we're not getting fuel right here. So, we blew air through there. Maybe the tank is just that low. Hard to say. So, we should figure out. I'm gonna blow some air back up in there, see if we can figure out which tank we're putting fuel in. Listen for the bubbles. Oh, of course that doesn't wanna slide off though. Oh, for cheese and rice. You know what, we're gonna leave that end on. This end will come right off. Whoa! Okay, uh, yeah, I could use another hand down here, Duff. Definitely sounds like the driver's side tank. Of course, just doing that, now we don't have any fuel running out. What the French toast? We lost our siphon. Maybe they had the clear line on here so that you could uh, see if this thing was doing fuel selector things. Maybe it was there for multiple reasons. Not only to transport fuel, but for a visual. Who knows? Whitey is an interesting character. And he probably never did it anymore. Probably the previous guy. We got the scout off the hoist. And so I thought, let's check the lights before we go take it for a drive. Of course we had no headlights. We had both tail lights. We didn't have this marker light, but that marker light's working. So I did a little dig and got the old Power Probe 3. I don't know, it's a Power Probe. I think it's a 3. These things are, are pretty good. Pretty good. It's the PP3. We got that out. And sure enough, just like it always is, it's the dimmer switch on the floor. But usually you get highs and not lows, or lows and not highs, but it's just a regular Delco floor dimmer switch. We had one on hand, so. We got light stuff. We can go for an R-I-D-E. So I'm gonna wash my hands and we'll probably grab a can of gas because I feel like she's probably pretty empty. And we're gonna do this. Finally, this scout has been kicking our butt. He said this thing, all four tires spin like legit all wheel drive. He said this thing is, Goes through the stuff like nobody's business. Should we go find some mud? That's gonna be kind of hard because it hasn't rained here in like two and a half months. Okay, let's do this. Who changes the oil? KC Tire and Auto, Glitter, North Dakota. Man, that place hasn't been open in like at least 15 years. All right, got the oil. Cyclops on the floor, hopefully for some mood lighting, you know, so you guys can see us. We're gonna try our first uh, night drive. So we gotta get this thing done or we're gonna lose the shot. Where is a reverse? Not there. There it is. I still can't believe that knock is acceptable. Lights? Oh yeah. High beam indicator even works. Brakes kind of even work. Where is the, there's the door. Duff, you want to go close the overhead door? That'd be great. It's kind of fitting, you know. It's it's Halloween spooky season, so we kind of got the, the flashlight under your face. I'm the well, leprechaun. Garth, <laughs> I'm the well, leprechaun. Cool it, okay. Don't try and steal <laughs> me, Patago. Oh, 
Well, I can't get the door open, so we're uh, Duke Boy in it. Duke Boy's needed a dog. Well, of course. If you're gonna die, die by the shop. You know, your dad never wanted you to have the dome light on. It's, it's really not illegal. It's just really annoying. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to go over to the fuel shed. We have ourselves a gas can. Okay. Six gallons of petrol. Let's do this. These cyclopses are. I mean, I wish they'd be brighter when you're under a hood. And you got it shining in your face in a car on low. I wish it was a little bit. There's two, there's three. Yeah, that's low. It's low beamed up. Oh, come on, window go up. She's, she's chilly. We're gonna let this car go by. If we can stop. Yeah, brakes. I'm new. Oh, didn't quite kill it, just about. A lot faster than first, I thought it would. Okay, it's really weird to drive, too, like, I don't know. Super awkward seating position. Doesn't help that you're sitting on a boat seat, I guess.
pressure. She is drafty in here though. We got a pretty stiff wind tonight, so it's probably just blowing in. 80,950.7 miles. tracks are going to be a real treat. No. I never noticed that it says yield on these railroad tracks. I, I assume they want you to yield to said train. Seems like a good idea. No trains. did uh, run into the owner. He's pretty excited about it. He's going to be a lot less excited if it doesn't start. There we go. He kept saying, boom, boom. So uh, apparently that's the noise that this thing makes. Can't find it, grind it. Here we go. Back to uh, Morski Worldwide Headquarters. We're having a little bit of a technical difficulty with the Duff Cam, so we're just rocking the Morski Cam, unfortunately. Guess what? I can aim it at them just for you guys. Because we all know that's why you're here. And you're just going to hang out on the floor. Well, not the floor, but down on the seat. Okay, now we're back up again. You never know what you're going to do. What do you think? Is the scout a good rig? Yeah. It's a little drafty. Coast 
into a stop here on the intersection, which is where you park when you're hunting and or broke down. Don't leave it on the side of the road like some of the blue platers like to do when they're hunting waterfowl here. Well, any idea why it stopped, Duff? Yeah, me either. Let's run it now. It's like there's something at the bottom of the tank and it's starving it for fuel randomly. Well, we made it almost halfway home, so... It should only do it at least twice more before we get back to the uh, worldwide headquarters. I finally figured out, usually your gas pedal's over here, your steering wheel's here, and your clutch is to the right, and your brake is to the left of the steering wheel. Well, the brake is to the left side of the steering wheel, and that's why it feels like you're sitting kitty wampus in here, because... Because you are. Transmission makes some funny noises. But it does shift nice. I'm not gonna lie, this thing does drive significantly better. Right you are, Ken. Oh. A little dieselage going on there. Well, there you have it, folks. We got a 1967 International Scout back on the road for the first time in a handful of years. Really not that long, generally speaking, compared to what we deal with on a regular basis. A little work on the fuel system, a little work on the electrical, a battery, fixing a tire, a whole lot of time inspecting the bottom end to find out that that noise was just the way they are. We fixed a frost plug that was rusted out. We put a dimmer switch in it. I don't know what else we did. We changed oil in it. We put some fresh gas in it, put some fuel lines on it. Stuff that things need from sitting. We bled the brakes. And uh, we got this thing back on the road. So, there you have it. I gotta get a pickup packed up tonight and trailer so we can go find some more stuff for you guys this weekend. So thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Check out the merch down in the link below. Like, comment, all that good stuff. We'll see you next week. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. International Scouts, they're pretty fun. They're right up there with Broncos and K5 Blazers, the early ones, 69 to 72s, two-wheel drives, though. All right, let's get back to work. What are we going to work on next week, Duff?